Hello and welcome to my channel Study with Delnas. Today's topic is Intra Industry Trade with Grubel and Lloyd Index. So, this is the index which is uh, the measure to calculate the intra industry trade between countries. So, without wasting any time, let me get started. Introduction to intra industry trade. So what is intra-industry trade? It is that international trade where same types of goods and services are imported or, or exported or done both ways between different countries but within the same industries. So intra-industry trade refers to the exchange of similar products belonging to the same industry. For example, industry could be automobiles industry or any food and beverage industry or minerals industries. So here are some statistics. Europe exported $2.6 million of motor vehicles in 2002 and it imported same motor vehicles in for 2.2 million. So here you will see that the exchange ratio is so similar 2.6 and 2.2 whereas another example is Japan Japan exported 4.7 million and it imported 0.3 million only so here you will see that the exchange is not so close so the intra industry trade over here will be near to 0 and in the previous example it will be near to 1 we'll understand that in the, in the coming slides also so intra industry trade means trade within the same industries and to measure intra industry trade uh, we have an index called as grubel lloyd index or popularly known as gl index prevalence of intra industry trade between similar economies so the theory of comparative cost advantage suggests that uh, economies should trade uh, when they find that the opportunity cost of production and the difference between it is large. So moreover, the theory of comparative cost advantage suggests that a particular country should specialize in particular products and then exchange those products for other products. So that is about the comparative cost advantage uh, theory and I have already posted a video of comparative cost advantage theory. Uh, I will share the, uh, the link of it in the description box and you will also be able to see on the top right corner of the screen. So now let us understand that why is intra industry trade prevailing in our economies. So in a real world situation, we'll see that high income economies like in uh, United States, Canada, European Union, Japan, Mexico and China uh, in these economies more um, more or uh, half of its uh, trade is intra industry trade and there are reasons for it which we are going to discuss in the later part of the video. So uh, let us check this out uh, in table one statistics. So this table shows us the US exports and imports uh, for the year 2015. So 19% of the US exports go to the European Union and 21% of the US imports come from European Union. Similarly, check out Japan. 4% of US exports go to Japan and 6% of US exports, uh, uh, US imports come from Japan. Similarly, it goes with Canada, Mexico and China. So here we can see that intra industry trade is prevailing between uh, these high income economies. So here is an another table which shows US exports and imports in some large categories or in some large industries. So in this table, you will find that US is both a substantial exporter and in substantial importer of goods belonging to the same industry. So here is a report US exports and imports in 2014 and this is according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis. 
So here you will find that these are all the industries like auto industries, food and beverage industries, consumer goods industries, capital good industries. Then you have industrial supplies industries and transportation industry. So here you will find that US is a substantial exporter and substantial importer also. So for example, let us take the first industry, auto industry. So in this industry, you will see that US exports is 146, whereas the imports is 327. Okay, so here you'll find that there is a substantial amount of exports and substantial amount of imports also. So see, for example, in capital goods, the imports and exports are so close. So uh, the exports are 550 and the imports are 551. So in such a situation, the Global Lloyd Index would come closer to 1. Okay, and similarly in all of the other industries. What are the main reasons or benefits of intra-industry trade? So the first benefit of it is learning, innovation and unique skills which get developed. So consider a category of machinery where US uh, has a considerable amount of intra-industry trade. So now machine comes in variety, um, in variety. For example, US may, uh, might be exporting machinery for man manufacturing of wood and importing machinery for any other manufacturing of say any food product. So in this category of machine, machine industry or machinery industry where a US is a substantial exporter and importer of machines, it doesn't mean that machines uh, which are getting traded over here are similar but they are differentiated and yet similar. So working on specific and particular products, uh, firms develop unique and different and innovative skills. So in these recent years, international uh, trade has developed a trend of splitting up the value chain. So what is value chain? Value chain describes how a good is produced in different stages. For example, let us take an example of production of iPhones. So here design and engineering is done in United States. These parts are supplied from Korea and the assembly is done in China. And again, the advertising and marketing is done in the United States. So, uh, and a big thanks to the improvement in technology and communication technology and transportation because this has made a uh, value chain to, uh, uh, to become much more easier. And it is because of this reason that the firms split up the value chain, international trade or intra-industry trade uh, does not involve whole finished products like automobiles or refrigerators, but instead it involves more specialized goods, say for example, automobile dashboards or shelves which fit into the refrigerator. Say for example, uh, the shelves which fit into the refrigerator come from one country, then, then the bulb or the light which is there in the refrigerator comes from another country, then the racks that are there, there in the refrigerator comes from another country, then the drawers which are there uh, in the refrigerator comes from another country, and say for example, even the outer body which is um, made of stainless steel also comes from another country. So. Uh, each country is specializing in a particular uh, value chain and this allows the workers in the firms to learn and innovate on particular uh, products of the value chain. The second main reason or the second benefit of intra-industry trade is economies of scale. Economies of scale usually produces economic gains and that is why it is one of the uh, broader, uh, broad benefit of intra-industry trade. So the concept of economies of scale means that as the scale of output goes up, the average cost of the production declines at least 
to a certain point. So here in economies of scale, even if the output increases, the average cost of production declines. So I am going to make a separate video on economies of scale. So if you're watching this video on a later date, then I might have already uploaded the video. So in that case, the link will be in the description box and you will also be able to see the link on the top right corner of the screen. Okay. Explanations for rising intra-industry trade. So there are some demand side explanations and some supply side explanation. So consumers have a variety of products from which it can choose that which product they want to use. So the next point is the economies of scale. Then the next point is lower tariffs and the falling transportation cost uh, reduces the price of imported products and services and this actually increases the demand. For supply side explanation, increasing openness of countries. For example, when one country was selling a product just within its geographical boundaries, now due to intra-industry trade, that product can be sold in different countries and this will increase. This will increase the openness and this will also increase the supply. And investments and in human capital allow uh, countries to produce similar and interme uh, similar intermediate and final products and thus increasing its competitiveness. Now let us understand how to calculate intra-industry trade. So Grubel and Lloyd index measures the intra-industry trade of a particular product and they introduced it in 1971. So here is the formula. This what you can see over here is the formula. So what does the formula say? The formula says that G GLI, which is Grubel Lloyd index is equals to 1 minus XI minus MI in the absolute value divided by C divided by XI plus MI. Okay, where GLI can be more than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. Okay, so this Grubel Lloyd index, the value of this Grubel Lloyd index will be between, will be between 0 and one it can't be less than zero and it can't be more than one okay now what is this xi and mi xi denotes the exports and mi denotes the imports and the i denotes the good which is being traded okay so for example if the grubel lloyd index which is gl is equals to 1. This would mean that there is equal level of import and export between the two countries of a particular product which belongs to the same industry. Conversely, if the Grubel Lloyd index is equals to 0, then this would mean that there is absolutely no intra industry trade. Or this could also mean that a particular country is only exporting or importing a particular good. For example, if a country only exports or imports, say for example, uh, let us take sugar. So if a country only imports and exports sugar, then the Grubel Lloyd index would be equal to zero. because for the Grubel Lloyd index to be more than zero, uh, there has to be two countries where intra industry trade takes place between a particular product which belongs to the same industry. On the other hand, on the other hand, if the country imports exactly as much as it exports, then the Grubel Lloyd index score would be a perfect one. 
Now that we know the formula for calculating intra-industry trade, here is a table which says that intra-industry trade of Germany. Now this is just for practice purpose and this is not the actual data. But this table will actually help you to understand uh, the formula in a better way and uh, will also give you confidence to solve these small uh, sums or these problems. Okay, so in this table you will see that these are all the articles meaning these are all the industries here is all the exports here is all the imports and these are the answers to it okay but how to reach to these answers is what we are going to understand now so let us take the first one and we have a formula written over here uh, so that it becomes easy for you to calculate now ceramic and paving tiles now in this industry the exports are seven and the imports are eight so seven minus eight upon seven plus eight you have minus one over here okay now this would come to one minus one divided by 15. Now what you have to do is 1 has to be divided by 15 and whatever answer you will get from that you have to minus 1 and then the answer will come to 0 0.93. Let us take the next example which is uh, the automobile sector. So in that you have 1 minus now what, what is the uh, exports? The exports is 4 and the imports is 254. So you will have 4 minus 254 upon 4 plus 254. So you will have 1 minus 250 upon 258. Now what you have to do? You have to divide 250 by 258. And then whatever value you will get, you have to minus 1 from it. And then the answer would come to 0 0.03. Let us take the next example, diamonds. Okay, so you will have 1 minus. So what are the exports for diamonds? 88 and imports are 116, 116. Okay, so you will have 88 minus 116 upon 88 plus 116 okay so you will have 1 minus 28 divided by 204 now what you have to do is you have to divide 28 by 204 and whatever answer you will get you have to minus 1 from it and then your answer would be 0. 86. Now let us move ahead and find the global Lloyd index for oil and oil products. So here what values do we have for exports? It is 0 and for imports it is 342. Okay so according to the formula we will go 1 minus 0 minus 342 upon 0 plus 342. So this would be 1 minus 342 upon 342, which would be 1 minus 1 and which would be equal to 0. The another way to identify straight away that the answer would be 0 is when a, a particular country is only importing or exporting a particular product. So here in this case, in this oil and oil product industry, you will see that Germany is only importing and not at all exporting. So when a country is only importing or exporting a particular product, then straight away the intra-industry trade will, will be equal to zero. We'll understand this better in the next example, which is copper ore industry. 
so in this we have germany only exporting and not importing okay so here also the straight away answer which you can understand would be zero uh, but just for our sake of calculating and showing you how the calculation goes so let us just start understanding about the copper ore industry so according to the formula it would be 1 minus 280 minus 0 upon 280 plus 0 this would be 1 minus 280 upon 280 which would be 1 minus 1 and which would be equal to 0 okay now you have glass bottles and jar industries glass bottles and jars industry so how would we calculate this now here you will see that the exports and imports are so close so the value this Gruber Lloyd index would come near to 1 let's see how does that happen so you have 1 minus you have 17 minus 15 upon 17 plus 15 which would be 1 minus 2.32 which would be 1 minus whatever the answer would be and the answer would come to 0 0.94 so you will have 2 divided by 32 and whatever answer will be you have to minus 1 out of it okay and last one which would be uh, seafood industry okay let us check that out okay so you will have 1 minus 17 minus 0 0.1 upon 17 plus 0 0.1 which would be 1 minus 16.9 upon 17.1 and when you will do the calculation you will get the answer 0 0.01 okay so here is the way we have calculated um, the global Lloyd index for all of these industries in one of my previous slide you have seen this table okay now I want you to practice these questions and answer uh, it in the comment section so that I can understand that you have understood how to calculate the Grubel Lloyd index okay so these are all the industries okay I'll just write over here industries auto industries and food and beverage industries these are all the industries these are the quantity of exports and these are the quantities of, uh, quantity of imports and now you have to find the Gruber Lloyd index for all of these industries and I want you to write the answer in the comment section which will uh, assure me that you have understood how to calculate the Gruber Lloyd index this was the end of the video I hope you like my video and if you have liked it please don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up also subscribe my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon besides the subscribe tab because this will send you a notification whenever I upload a new video please share this video with your friends and family let me know your feedback and your thoughts in the comment section below I also have my email address written down below uh, till then stay tuned with my channel and take care bye bye